Today on Fiddle and Fables, we're going to be talking about fast passages. I'm going to give you three tips today on how to practice your fast passages to make them more consistent, cleaner, and more confident. The first tip is to practice a technique called flossing. If you don't know what flossing is, go back and watch my video from a couple weeks ago on practicing string crossings. Basically, this technique entails taking your fast passage out of context and putting a space before and after every string crossing. This teaches your brain exactly where your string crossings are in your passage, and when you put it back in context, it's a lot easier to anticipate them. The second tip I want to share with you is a practice technique that a lot of teachers use in different forms, and this is where you practice your fast passage with different rhythm patterns. The idea behind this is if you're only practicing a couple of notes as fast notes and you're holding out others, you're only practicing half the fast passage at once, but you're practicing it in context. So it really helps you get your transitions cleaner. For this, I'm going to demonstrate using just a small moment from Sansan's Introduction in Rondo Capriccioso. Here's how it sounds for real. <laughs> For this practice technique that I'm going to show you, you're going to put this little passage into three different rhythm patterns. And these rhythm patterns are really useful for any fast passage. It can be a little bit tricky when your notes are in sets of four because it feels like you're breaking them up unevenly. But the benefit of doing that is you really learn your notes. So the first rhythm that you're going to do is two sixteenth notes followed by an eighth note, like this. So that's your first rhythm. And basically all this technique is, is you're changing where you put the one eighth note in the pattern. So I started with two sixteenths followed by an eighth. Now we're gonna do the eighth note at the beginning and then two sixteenth notes like this. The final one I think is the trickiest for most people and that's where you put the eighth note in the middle. So you do a sixteenth, then an eighth, then another sixteenth, like this. So there's all three of your rhythm patterns. Practicing like this, a little bit under tempo, will really help you learn the transitions between one note and the next and keep your fingers and your bow moving at exactly the same time. The third tip I have for you is just on how to speed up your tempo. And this is a pretty simple one. Basically, I have a couple of different methods to practice with the metronome. When you're practicing fast passages, you want to start out with whatever tempo you're extremely comfortable with. You can play it perfectly from beginning to end at that tempo. So that's where you start your metronome and you go through it at least three times in a row perfectly. Once you've achieved that, then you bump up the tempo and you only want to bump it up by three to five clicks at a time. And then you just repeat the process, go up five clicks, Practice till you can play it three times in a row perfectly, go up five clicks, etc. The other method for speeding up your tempo with the metronome works for some people and doesn't really work for others. 
For this method, you actually start at your comfortable tempo, just like the other one, but then instead of only going up five clicks, you go up to like way faster than you're comfortable with, and you just try and see how it goes. And it's gonna be messy and chaotic and you're gonna miss notes, but then after you play it once at that crazy tempo, then you bring it back down to like five to seven clicks above your original tempo. And it feels so much easier. It can actually trick your brain into being able to play it faster than you started by a little bit more than if you were just going up incrementally. The last piece of advice I have for you about fast passages is to keep your bow really heavy and really confident. I didn't really get this through my head until pretty far along in my education, and it's crazy how well it works. But surprisingly, if your bow is confident, your left hand is confident too. It doesn't really make sense why that's the case, but it's true. So if you force yourself to play with a really strong, heavy bow, even if you're nervous, especially in performance, it'll make your fast passages a lot more confident and consistent. Hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next time.